guys. This is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, today I'm here with another 12 Weeks of Fall and Halloween. This is week number four. I am so sorry I didn't get this done last week. I was coming down with some kind of a bug that lasted a few days, and I wasn't able to get this done last week. But I'm all better, so I'm back with week number four. So everything will be moved back a week, but we'll still have... Uh, the uh, all the Halloween projects done at least three or four weeks before Halloween, so you'll have time to make these. Now, this holds um, the fun size Reese's Pieces bags or the M and M's too. It's just a neat little pouch. It doesn't take long to make it all. It's uh, made with the Them Bones DSP, and I'm using the Pick of the Patch uh, bundle also. So, if you'd like to make this along with me, look down in the video description below, and you'll find the. Uh, link to my blog post. There you'll find the paper sizes, dimensions for this, and the supply list. Get all your stuff together and come back and make it with me. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first off, I want to show you the bundle. This is a bundle that has a punch rather than a die set. It's in the September to December mini catalog for 2023. Uh, this pick a patch is so cute. I've actually got a whole card class at home that I did three weeks ago, I think it was. And if you'd like to watch that free class video, I'll have the link pop up here in the top right corner, and you can also find it down in the video description below. And it's three different cards that you can make with this, because this is good for fall and Halloween. But I'm using it for Halloween this time. And I'm going to use this pumpkin here, because this is the pumpkin that matches up with this big one here. And I'm using this leaf and stem, because those also line up with this one. And I'm also using the Happy Halloween stamp. I'm also using a Deckled Circles dies. I'm happy to tell you that these are available to purchase again. They're back in stock. And so make sure you get these quick in case they sell out again. They're real popular. Just who doesn't want all of these circles? And they're deckled. They're not just plain circles. It's just, oh, it's a really good die set. So the ones that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the number three die. Whenever I say numbers, I start with the smallest is one. There's one, two, three. So there's the third one. And then I need the number four one. Okay, first off, I want to get some stamping done. So I've got a piece of basic white that's two and a half by one and a half. And I'm going to use the pick of the patch builder punch. And I want to grab my pumpkin pie ink pad and that larger pumpkin I pointed out a minute ago that you need. I'm going to ink this up. Oh, let's do it this way. It's, since it's a solid stamp, pretty much, it's sticking to my ink pad there. That's much better. Okay, what I'm going to do, first off, I want to look at this punch upside down. Now you can tell that this is upright and I'm going to be sticking it in this side so I'm going to stamp it here on the right end. This is longer than what I need it to be that way I've got some cardstock to hold on to. Hold that down for a few seconds and now I want to put a little face on it so it looks like a jack-o-lantern. So I've got this. I'm going to use my tuxedo black memento pad. I'm kind of twisting it a little bit, the ink pad a little bit because that uh, tends to ink it up a little better, at least for me it does. And I'm going to stamp this uh, right here about the middle. Hold it down for a few seconds so that ink soaks in. So I want to have a nice dark image for that. There we go. So now I've got a little jack-o-lantern. And now I want to grab a piece of basic white. This is just a strip that's three-quarter inches uh, in width. It doesn't uh, matter, or yeah, width. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long it is. Uh, well, just as long as it's at least two and a half inches long. Now I'm going to look at this punch again. I do know that the leaf is upright. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unlock this because these claps, you can lock them in place for storage. Then you open it up to punch. I'm going to look at this. That leaf is upright. I'm going to do it first. I'm going to grab it. Use my old olive ink pad. Ink this up. I'm just going to stamp it here on this end. And go ahead and punch it out. Now, angle it to me and then I'll show you how it uh, centers. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got this punched out. And now I'm going to grab the stem. Now I'm going to look at this punch again. I always look at the punch upside down so that way I know which direction to stamp my stamp. That way it lines up a lot easier. And the fatter end of the stem is on the right. So that is how I want to stamp it. So I'm inking it up with old olive. I've got the fatter end on the right. I think I said left a minute ago. I meant the right. <laughs> I'm going to get this right in there. Angling it to me again, and then I'll show it to you. So we've got that right there. So now I've got my stem. And last but not least, let's do the little pumpkin. 
So I'll get this in. There we go, punch it. Now I've got our cute little pumpkin. And that is all the punching we need to do. I do need to, oh, I've got one more thing to stamp. That's right. I need to do my Happy Halloween. So I'm going to grab a piece of basic white. This is a two inch by three quarter inch. Grab my Happy Halloween stamp and my Tuxedo Memento again. Once again, I'm going to twist the ink pad a little bit and kind of tap it. That looks like it's inked up pretty good. And I want to stamp it towards the right end. I don't want it in the center. I want it to the right because the left end is going to be tucked under that pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern. There we go. So now I've got the Happy Halloween ready to go. And let's get our die cutting machine out. Okay, this time, since I'm just doing small circles, I grabbed my Boho Blue uh, Mini Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine. This is still available. It's while supplies last. The white one is in the annual catalog, so it is available. This is only available on the online store. And it's actually $3 less than the white one. So if you want to get it, make sure you get it before it sells out. But uh, for the then the plates do come with it. Uh, there are a couple others that come with it, but I only needed these. So I'm going to use uh, plate number one. This is for die cutting. And then a plate number two. Then I'm going to grab a piece of Cajun Craze. This is a two and a half by two and a half inch piece. And I've also got a piece of the Them Bones DSP. And this is a two inch by two inch piece. I'm going to grab that uh, larger of the dies that I got. This is the number four die. And then I've got the smaller one right here. Get that mixture you're seeing that good. I put another number two plate on top. I'll start putting this through. I'm not worrying about tape because I just want it to stay on the paper. I don't have to worry about keeping it around a stamped image. It's a lot easier. It's okay if it moves a little bit just as long as it stays on the paper. So I've got my Cajun Craze Circle and my Them Bones DSP. That's what I'm talking about. I love that deckled edge on those circles. So I've got all the pieces together. Now let's make this pouch. Okay, I want you to get either your Simply Scored scoring tool out or your trimmer that has a scoring blade. I'm going to use my trimmer this time. I'm going to get the cutting blade. If you've got our trimmer, the dark one is the cutting blade. So get that out of the way because we don't want to do any cutting. We just want to do um, some scoring. So this piece is a piece of the Them Bones DSP again. This is a four inch by eight inch piece. I'm actually using a different one from what I used on my original. I just want to see what this one was going to look at look like too. So with a four inch side along the top, I'm going to score both ends at a one quarter inch. So it's going to be a real narrow score line. So this first line here on the right is a one quarter inch. Me being right handed, it's easier for me to line it up over here. So I'm going to go over a couple times. It doesn't, you don't have to go over as much as you do on cardstock because it's paper. Turn this completely around, line it up at the quarter inch mark again there on the right. That looks pretty good. Oh, it moved on me. Hold on. There we go. And now I want to turn it this way so the 8 inch side is on the top. And I want to score this at one and a half. So I'm, now I'm using my uh, ruler on the left side. So there's one and a half. Oh, and I did forget to tell you, thank you, I did it right. These, if the pattern is every which way, it doesn't matter. But since all these bats are kind of upright, I kind of don't want them upside down on my front. I want this bottom to be what I start scoring. Okay, that's the line I want to start uh, lining it up. So you line the bottom edge at one and a half and score like I just did. Then you want to move it just a quarter of an inch to one and three quarter inches. And we'll score that. And then you want to go to four and three quarter. So that is right here. And I'll score that. And then we want to go again at five inches. And that is the last score line we need. Okay, I've got some cutting I want to do on this first. I don't know if you can see the score line. Sometimes it's hard to see in a video, especially with pattern paper. But the narrow end here, this is actually the bottom of the piece down here. I want to cut along this score line Go past the first one that's going crisscrosses it and go to the second one. So I'm just going to cut right along that score line. Go past the first score line and then stop at the second. And then I'm going to cut right there. Okay. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to cut along that score line and stop at the second 
intersecting score line. And then just cut this right along that second score line. So now this is going to be the top of our little pouch, okay, the little flap. Now, you might be able to see it better on this side. I've got some little boxes right here. We've got our little three-quarter inch score lines here. These two middle ones here, there's a little square on each end. Just cut along those two little score lines and stop at the first intersecting score line. I'm going to go over here. So this is where you see that middle square that you made with the score lines. Okay. Now we want to burnish the uh, score lines. That just means to fold them. You want to do this before you start putting it together because it's a lot harder to put it together if you haven't done that already. So turn it over. I'm just going to take my bone folder. Here's another score line right here. Then we've got two more up here. There's that one. And then this one, it's okay that it's flattening back out again. The fibers have already uh, been broken up in the paper, so it's going to keep folding a lot easier now that I've burnished them. Now here's one here. And then I've got one of those little squares. That I think I'm just going to use my finger with. And then do this one here. I might go ahead and push it down, that square down a little bit now that I've got the other one down. It's a little easier when they're both down a little bit. Bring this over. And we'll get this end done. And then it'll be all done with the burnishing. Got my little square. And here's the last one. Okay, so the pouch is going to kind of go together like this. I'm going to grab my silicone mat. Okay, now this is the first time I've only done quarter inch sizes. You can make it a little wider. You have to adjust some of the score lines, but it's pretty much the same. But what I'm going to do, the two little squares, I'm going to fold these down. I'm not going to put any glue on those. I want those to stay on the inside, so I'm okay with them being down like that, okay? Now the two bottom edges here, I'm going to take my multi-purpose glue. I'm going to put a strip just right along the center of both of these. I think it's a little easier to put the glue on first thing. And because this is narrow, it's a little hard to get uh, it to attach right at first. But don't worry, just kind of hold it down. I'm going to line it up. I'm making sure that this top edge, the two top edges here are lined up because I don't want one of those sticking up. I did that once and it didn't want to close as well. So I'm going to take my finger and kind of push that a little bit. Before I go to the other side, I'm going to take my bone folder and kind of push it down a little bit. Now this is a side that has the glue, again, that we did earlier. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, just line those up, making sure that the top edges up here line up. And then kind of hold that down. If I, I make sure that I've definitely got the top down, then I can take my bone folder and put that in there because the bone folder is a little thinner than my finger. So I'm actually just pushing it down against my work surface and that makes the glue take hold really easy. So we've actually made the pouch. So now I want to start putting together the belly. I've got a belly band and we'll use this here in just a minute, but this is an eight inch by one inch piece. So I'll put that to the side because we don't need that just yet. I'm going to grab the two circles and I didn't want to bother getting my seal out. You can definitely use it. I'm just going to go ahead and use my multipurpose glue. And this is just going to go here in the center of the Cajun craze. And I can kind of squish it around a little bit until I get right in the center. Once the glue gets starts drying, it won't move anymore. So I've got that. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to bring in my silicone mat quick. Bring in my little pumpkin and the stem and the leaf. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here. Actually, I'm going to go all the way across, I think. It'll dry. If it's a little too much, and that is definitely too much. This is a brand new bottle, so it's coming out a little too fast. I'm going to take a little bit off and put it on my um, mat here. Once it dries, I can peel that right off. Now, I like the stem with a fat side, fat, fat end, I mean, on the top, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put this down, push it right there. I've still got glue here. And then I'll put my little leaf over here and hold it down for a few seconds. And that glue will hold on to it. So that is all together. And now I want to put this on here, but I liked it popped up a little bit. 
So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to use my black dimensionals. I'm going to put one right here where the leaf and the stem are. So that kind of holds those in place. And then I'll do it like this. Oh, one thing I did forget. Let's try and do this. I want to grab this, my Happy Halloween. It is going to be going underneath here like so, okay? So I think what I'm going to do, I don't want this to wobble. The black dimensionals come with mini uh, dimensionals also, so if I can get a hold of that. I'm going to put a little mini one just right here, okay? I don't want it to go all the way over here because I want to be able to tuck this in, okay? That big one, it would have gotten in the way, so that's why I'm going to grab a little one. I love having both sizes in that pack. I'm going to take the backing off. Well, if I can get a hold of that one, there we go. And I'm going to have the bones on here. You can have them diagonal. It really doesn't matter, but I kind of liked them like that. And I'm going to put my little guy right here in the middle. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the end here. Actually, I'll just do my glue again like I did with everything else. And then I'm going to put this underneath. Oops, there we go, moved on me. And I'm going to push it down a little bit. Now I've got my little happy Halloween on there, okay? Now grab the belly band. And the trick with this, I'm going to look and see how I like the bats. There, they're kind of going down. I kind of like them going up a little bit. So that's the way I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring this down. A little, well, I'll take that back. Let me grab my Reese's Pieces. Because this will make, as this fattens it up just a little bit, putting those in there. But see how e those go in so good. It really doesn't fatten it up. But that's actually going to make it a little harder uh, so it doesn't collapse on me when I go to put this belly band on. So I'm going to put this on here. Have this go down a little farther than center. Actually, real close to the bottom. Then I'm going to wrap this around. And that's going to make this end be kind of in the middle, which is what I want. And you don't want it on too tight because you want to be able to move it. So I'm just loosely putting it around. You don't want it to be too loose either. So just kind of go between, just a little snug, let's put it that way, okay? And I'm going to kind of pinch it up here so I kind of make little folds. And then I'm going to take this down a little bit. I'm going to put a little glue on this end. Bring this one down. Make sure I've got that in the screen. Put a little glue down here. And bring this up. Make sure it's all straight. Make sure it's just a little snug, not real tight. Hold those down for a few seconds. Okay. And then I'm going to be putting this right on the belly band. I could just use seal, but I kind of liked it being popped up too. A lot of times when I make cards, I only do one layer popped up. But with this one, I decided to go uh, with both of them since it's not going to go in an envelope. I'm, going to gra I'm actually going to use these small ones here. I'm going to kind of make a little square here. When I put this on here, you can tell that there's not much of it showing of the belly band on top and bottom. So I'm going to kind of put this down a little farther. I'm going to make a little square with these. I think it's better to put it on the belly band because if you put it on here, you might have it go farther, too far on your circle, and then you're going to have dimensionals and this belly band is going to end up sticking. We don't want that to happen. So now that I've got that there, I'm going to go ahead and take these off. I could take the belly band off to put this on, but I still think it's a little easier having those candies underneath there to support it. Don't push too hard because you don't want to rip up all your candies. I'm not needing to. And I'm just going to put this right here in the center. And that is it. Can you believe how quick that went together? Not too many score lines. You're just using mainly DSP. But here's the other ones. You can use whatever DSP you've got. That's Halloween, of course. You could also make a Christmas one. There are just a lot of different things you can make with, with this. When you just want to give somebody a little piece of candy. If it's their birthday and you just want to give them a little treat, you can make it a birthday one. But this is with that Them Bones DSP, and I really, really like that a lot. So I think both of those. I like the tombstones. The first time I did it, I scored it wrong, and my tombstones, I'm okay with them being upside down on the back. Because one of the sides have to be upside down. But the front, you definitely want to have upright. So make sure you remember when you start scoring to start on, on the uh, bottom end of that piece. That way you'll have everything go in the right direction. Well, I hope you enjoyed today. This week's um, 12 Weeks of Fall and Halloween. I'll be back with another Halloween. There are two more Halloween ones left. And I'm not sure what I'm making just yet, 
I think I have an idea, but it'll be a surprise to you. So I hope you can come back next week. And don't forget about my Thursday lives. So I have a live every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And it's um, always a card class at home. So it's a free class. I pick out a bundle or a stamp set and make three cards with it. And then you can get... Uh, the card kits for free with a qualifying order. So you can find out more about that. If you look down below, click the link that says my current host code offer. Click on that and that'll let you know which class, what class I'm doing. If I'm not doing a class, it'll be free embellishments. It's either, so whenever you order for me, it's either you get a card kits with embellishments or you get just the embellishments. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. And I'd love to send out your first set of catalogs to you for free. And these are the ones that are going on right now. The annual catalog and the September to December mini. This is the one I got the pick of the patch bundle out of and the Them Bones DSP. And then, um, so just click that contact me link below and uh, give me your mailing address and I'll get them mailed out to you right away. And if you want to stamp along with me again, make sure you click on that subscribe button below. And then when the bell icon pops up, select all. That way YouTube will notify you every time I upload a video and whenever I go live. So that way you don't miss anything. Oh, once again, I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.